good kitten internet. So this is a bit awkward. Um, I have actually recorded five episodes. Well, really more like four and a quarter episodes between the last video that you just saw and now. That's because I went through and played exactly what I had showed. Um, I'm recording far enough in advance where it wasn't too big of a deal. And that's when I found out that the Tinkers mod, or the Thinkers mod does a lot more than what it said on the tin. Uh, I ended up reading through the readme, and among some of the other things that it does... So you see this select ocean coverage thing? Yeah, it ignores that. It will actually shove everybody toward a Pangea-style map regardless of what you tell it for ocean coverage, whereas I had been playing assuming that it was more of an island hopish map, or at the very least, like, I'd be sharing a continent with one other faction. I was sharing a continent with all of the factions, and... On top of that, the Thinkers mod, one of the ways that it decided to try to fix the AI was by telling the AI to build a minimum of 50 bases. 50. For an idea for, and that's regardless of size of map. So if we were to, let me, um, so like for a huge planet, for an example, 50 bases. The AI usually has maybe about 15 by end of game. Maybe more if they've been pumping out extra colonies. Like me as a human on a large map, or a huge map, probably have closer to 30, 35, unless if I'm intentionally just trying to run up the score. That was such a drastic change that I ran out of space instantly because I was surrounded by every single one of the factions. I didn't realize I was going to be surrounded by the factions, so I didn't expand particularly fast. I was growing tall, which is more powerful individual bases, rather than growing wide, which is just ICS or Infinite City Sprawl, because it's more interesting and more entertaining for people on camera. This was a mistake. And as a result, I wasn't actually getting curb stomped, but it was just not fun. Um, if people are interested, I can upload the videos because I did record them and I've even edited two of them. But, ugh, it was terrible. I, I know it's probably just me and really disliking rebalance mods, but the way you rebalance a faction or rebalance the AI versus the player isn't to try and have the AI use every single rules exploit possible. Um, Infinite City Sprawl was an issue in Civilization 2, Smack, and Civilization 3. Uh, Civ 3, they tried to fix it by making the AI's Infinite City Sprawl, and then slapping you with a massive amount of corruption for trying to do Infinite City Sprawl yourself that the AI's weren't subject to. So all that it meant is that you had to Infinite City Sprawl, which is the idea of just pumping out cities as fast as you can and throwing them down everywhere, just to stop the AIs from taking all of your territory. That was a terrible idea for Civ 3, and it's a terrible idea for Smack. I'm sorry, I can't deal with that. It's a shame, too, because some of the changes are really nice. Like, I was getting invaded by uh, the... Believers, which are a religious faction, um, I was getting invaded by them using transports because they had, like, there was this small, almost bay-like area, and in order to coordinate their invasion better and attack me on multiple sides and multiple fronts at once, they actually started sending transports in to try to attack other parts of me. That was really cool. That's a good job. But all of the AIs became instantly aggressive with me for absolutely no reason. I mean, some of them had reasons, but most of them didn't. Um, I ended up having to kind of force the issue with fighting one force um, by using some relatively normal tactics for a smack veteran, but boring ones. And again, it just, one, I wasn't having fun. I was basically feeling like I was playing another 
uh, casters of magic situation where I don't like the rebalance, so why am I forcing myself to do it? And unlike with casters of magic, I'm not going to force myself to upload it. So what you're seeing over uh, wherever my face happens to be at the moment um, is just Prakex. There's no... Well, there's a tiny amount of the Thinker's mod because one of the optional things for the Thinker's mod is to add in some additional units by default, and those are still in place because I didn't feel like trying to rip those out. Not to mention, that's a really minor change. So instead, we are going to play Alpha Centauri, Alien Crossfire, and we're not going to be stupid about it. So I'm going to increase the ocean coverage because I do not trust the game to not just give us a Pangea situation again. Otherwise, all of the options are going to be basically the same as they were before. I'm going to play on talent again because I really feel like I just want to win right now. I don't want to have to think about things and while my default being transcend was normal, I'm just not going to worry about it this time. Uh, we're going to be playing with the same set of rules that I had discussed before, because that's the set of rules I like playing with. And since you didn't get the experience of me playing as Zack, we're going to be playing as the University of Planet again. Of the universe regresses infinitely towards smaller... Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a moment. Editor Spoon here. I need to interrupt me from the past. Uh because I neglected to mention something very important here. That is that Smack isn't necessarily going to look very good. So I had actually added, mentioned this at the start of the first run, but unfortunately, since the first run's not being uploaded, you're not getting a chance to hear it until now. So there is an issue with Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri, and, well, this time it's not YouTube's fault, but we're just going to go with video encoding in general. Smack was made in 1997, as I've mentioned multiple times at this point, and back then, they didn't really have transparency effects. In fact, they, most games used only 256 colors, whereas um, usually you had either 16-bit or 24-bit color with millions of colors instead. So what a lot of games did, and this is both console and PC, is that they used a concept called dithering, which is where you have one line of color, and then the next line is a different color, but the lines are so close together that when you take a ba uh, look back, they kind of look like they merge together. In addition, a lot of CRT technology ended up causing skin lines, to, or lines of color to just blur together anyway, because we didn't have very accurate graphics. So, Smack uses a lot of dithering. The problem is that it uses dithering everywhere, basically, and that doesn't encode very well on modern graphics. So, what I've done is that I've recorded all of my gameplay footage at 1440 by 1080. Uh, it's a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, so effectively 1080p. Normally I record at 1440p, but in this case it was more important to try to record at a resolution that's going to be fairly common for everyone. And while you obviously can do what you want with watching it, I would highly recommend that you watch it at 1080p both quality-wise and window size-wise. So if you have a 1080p monitor, full screen it. Um, the reason why I'm saying that is that otherwise the transparency effects are going to look glitched. Not just the transparency effects, but almost every solid color in Smack. So, for instance, the UI menus and so on in-game. They are all going to look wrong. Now, if it doesn't particularly matter to you and you're mostly here for the commentary and a little bit of the gameplay, that's perfectly fine. But I wanted to give everybody a heads up in advance that, yeah, for ideal situation, you're going to want to watch this at 1080p. Both quality-wise and um, window size-wise. If you can't do that, try to watch at the same quality as the size of your window, if at all possible. It's going to be better than a mismatch quality, because that's when YouTube will try upscaling things, and it's going to look awful. 
This was the part that took me the longest to figure out how to do when it came to recording Smack. That's part of the reason why it's taken years for me to actually upload something. So just wanted to get that out there. Now we'll go back to me from the past where hopefully I'll be talking, you know, all intelligent like and stuff, except that I absolutely stopped explaining things as detailed on run two compared to run one because I couldn't remember what I had already said. Anyway, back to me. Bye. Actually, wait, not quite yet. Say hi, Bukini. Okay, now I've shown you a good kitten. Bye. All right. So, um, we have our research goal. And in this case, we have... Um, Zach starts with a free technology. And... Whatever we choose here, we're just going to gain immediately. There's a couple of schools of thought as to what type of technology to grab in the beginning. Um, personally, I tend to race toward what's called secrets of the human brain. The secrets technologies in Alpha Centauri, what they do is the first faction that gets the secrets gets a free tech. So I tend to race toward that particular tech just so I can get a free tech and start snowballing. Um, the other concept would be starting with Centauri Ecology to build formers. Formers allow you to terraform, hence the name former, terraform the landscapes around your bases and between them and anywhere else. So it's useful to have really early on. I'm going to go ahead and go with biogenetics for my starting. Oh, we start with a transport ship. Interesting. Um, so this is a not great spot to start. But we're going to start there anyway, I guess. I don't think it makes sense to um, start anywhere else. So, unfortunately, I have to explain everything all over again because I'm not uploading the rest of the videos. So these are achievements, basically. Um, they're in-game achievements. Yes, the game had achievements back in 1987. Um, this is our first base. So... The achievement for the university is we have constructed our first base. However, it's just the first university base because Lady Deidre of the Gaians founded Mankind's first base. And you'll notice it's the same year. What it is is that this is a turn-based strategy game. And as such, we go in turns. The turns are in the order of the factions that we saw in that previous screen when we got to choose our faction. Lady Deidre Sky is the first faction on the list. Thus, she goes first. Technically, we can actually change those, but the achievements do nothing for reference. The only achievements that do something are the secrets. Like I said, this isn't a great spot because there are no special resources here, which is kind of garbage. But it's important to start fairly early, and I don't think we're going complete. to see a resource by moving around. Production complete. All right. Uh, we, this is our first actual research goal. We're going to start researching social psych. So to explain, um, recycling tanks. So recycling tanks is the first base improvement that we're going to make. What this does is that it increases the nutrient, minerals, and energy. Nutrients are food. You need food in order to grow population. Minerals are industry. You need minerals in order to build things. And energy is split into economy, which is money, science, which is science for research, and psych, which is going to be for making people happy. So what recycling tanks do is that they increase the base tile. As in this tile right here, I believe it's by one to each. Are you going to be baby? Yes, you're a baby. Oh. oh, my kitty cat. It stands in the middle of changing foods, so he's significantly hungrier than normal. Uh, in fact, he's ravenously hungry, which is fascinating. Um, actually, so I should explain a little bit of the user interface. Again, I explained all of these things once. I really hate the fact that I didn't upload the rest. Um, 
So you will notice that above my face and also on the opposite side of the screen from me, again, I don't know where I'm, I think I'm putting myself on the left side. So this is stuff on the right. Um, you'll notice there's a like a black square. Alpha Centauri was built with the idea of running at the screen resolution of 1024 by 768. You can run it at any resolution you want. It just requires a bit of a hack to make it work. Even in like no mods, no changes, Windows 95 computer, you can still run it at a higher resolution. And I did on Windows 2000, if I remember correctly. But um, so the UI is only designed to go as wide as 1024 pixels and not when I have it, which is 1440 pixels. So it looks a little off. I'm still keeping the same aspect ratio just because it looks better that way in my mind. You really don't, and it doesn't zoom in the higher resolutions. You just get tinier and tinier stuff. And this is what looks best on YouTube in my mind. Um, on the left, we have our menu. It, it's the menu. Um, the current unit is down here. This unit is a scout patrol. It has one, 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 or its stats, which is one attack one defense, and one movement. It is green. Green is its current experience level. Yes, units level up in this game. Um, they go from green to disciplined to hardened to something to elite. There might even be another one in the middle there. And you can technically even go down as low as very green or very, very green. It'll only display one very. Um... But these are the levels of the unit. As the unit levels up, they get bonuses to their attack and defense. And if a unit is elite, they get a bonus movement point. The next line is the um, its home base. Its home base in this case is University Base, which is the one that we just built. Um, university Base is, well, this is where resources come from in order to provide support for the unit. So in this case, this home unit is university base. It has one movement remaining for this turn, and it currently has no orders. Um, down below, this is our viewpoint. So we have our base. We have two minerals out of 40 for its current production. We have the unit that I previously mentioned, and then there's a second unit that's the same as the first unit, except that it doesn't have a home. It's independent. Independent units do not require support. So I try to keep independent units alive as long as possible. And... We're going to start scouting around with our independent unit. Um, over here, this is the terrain that we're currently sitting on. Unlike most Civ games, where the terrain that matters is like, is this a swamp? Is this grasslands? Is this plains? In Alpha Centauri, we care about the elevation, the rockiness, and the moisture levels. In this case, the elevation is 442 meters above sea level. Um... Elevation dictates how much energy that you get from a particular tile. The higher the elevation, the more energy you get. Uh, but the tiers start at 1,000 meters. So this and anything between 0 and 1,000 meters, energy-wise, might as well be 0. So you don't get any bonus energy for it. Uh, rolling indicates how rocky it is. It's either flat, rolling, or rocky. Rolling's the middle one of the three. What this means is that flat tiles get zero mineral bonus, rolling tiles get one mineral bonus, and rocky tiles get two mineral bonus. Finally, there's the moisture of the tile. In this case, this tile is moist. Moisture dictates food. If it's dry, you don't get food. If it's moist, you get one food. If it's rainy, you get two foods, and that's the three types of tile. There can be other things on the tile as well, which... We'll be getting to shortly, but that's a good general gist. Um, the middle is our information panel. This will be rotating between various panels throughout the game, although right now it's only going to be showing the basic stats and the letter X. Um, there is a bug with newer versions of Windows where a random character, in the first run it was the letter P, in this run it appears to be X. I haven't quite figured out why, and in... When I first moved to Windows XP, it was an Enya, which is an N with a tilde on top. I don't understand why there's a random masking character there. I know there's ways of fixing it. I didn't feel like making that happen. It's purely cosmetic. But this shows us the current year. The current year is 2102, 
So for reference, that means that we have taken one turn in the game because the game starts on mission year 2101 and every year is a turn. We are currently researching social psych. Our economy is plus one money per turn at 50% power. We have no power into labs and we're at 50% power on, or sorry, no power in psych and we're at 50% power in labs, which is we will gain a new technology in 12 turns. Other than that, we have once more our mission here on our current energy. We have a little mini map, which there's a couple of styles of mini maps. Next turn button and come links. This is how we contact other factions. We don't know anybody else, so there's nobody for us to talk to. Turn complete. A little concerned that we're on a tiny island. Turn complete. So, this tile, you will notice. It says down below that it is 1,410 meters above sea level, which means it would get a solar bonus. It is rolling, which means it would get a minerals bonus. It's arid, so there's no food here. It's on a ridge, which is a special type of terrain. In this case, ridges don't do anything. And there's xenofungus here. Xenofungus, it, fungus specifically, is the dominant life form of planet. There is no analog in any other game that I know of to xenofungus. So, at this point in the game, all Xenofungus will do is drop the nutrient output, a mineral output, and energy output of a tile to zero. And, when you enter the tile, one, it may take you multiple turns to enter, and two, you may randomly spawn some native life forms. So, Fungus bad at the start. Uh, toward the end of the game, Fungus is actually the best tile in the game, which is interesting to me. Uh, especially so in Alien Crossfire. Also, this is a colony pod. It makes colonies, or bases, is what you're going to hear me refer to it as. Because all your bases belong to us, of course. Indigenous life forms. All right, speaking of finding life forms, so the little the pod that i just investigated these are unity pods they have various goodies in them uh in other civ games are usually referred to by the title of goody hut except in this case there's a chance that it could be filled with native life forms in the sea that's an isle of the deep on land that's um bind worms so this is an isle of the deep turn complete this is not good. An Isle of the Deep is a... I'm not going to be able to point at things. Apologies. Um, an Isle of the Deep is a form of native life that... Think of it like ants. You know how ants... Certain types of ants can basically form a floating platform by all linking together? That's what an Isle of the Deep is based off of. And Isles of the Deep are water-based units that can hold other land-based units. Uh, in this case, it's holding two mindworms. A mindworm, as you can see down below, it has question mark attack, question mark defense, and one movement. By question mark, it's not actually meaning that you don't know what its attack and defense are. Question mark is actually a symbol indicating that it's psionic. Psionic attack and psionic defense, which if one's involved in being psionic, the other one's going to be involved... Um, means that you don't use the unit's attack power or defense. You use their level. It's basically a level contest. Or you're using your level as the attack. Take your pick. So a green unit is going to be weak against mindworms that are higher level. Get the idea. In addition, in psionic combat, the attacker gets plus 50% attack. And we'll end up seeing this next turn when I'm pretty sure that Isle of the Deep is going to destroy my poor unity foil. Ooh, I survived. Combat report. So that brief combat that you saw, um, unfortunately, I did not take a screenshot. I meant to. Um, that indicates, well, how we just fought. Uh, in this case, my unit survived. We took 10% damage, which is pretty darn good. And the enemy unit is destroyed. The combat report indicated that we destroyed two other units. That's because we destroyed a transport and the units that were holding on it drowned.
nutrient resources. Okay, there's nutrient resources on the other side of the island, at least. Turn complete. Yep, this is the Follis Ridge. This is a landmark, is what they're referred to in this game. In future Civ games, they instead call this a native or a natural wonder of the world. They do various things. The Follis Ridge doesn't do anything in particular. It's just a ridge. There's no special bonuses from it or anything. In the previous game that you didn't see, we had a jungle. Jungles add plus one food to every tile, which is nice. I am mostly just trying to find a good spot to set up a base. Indigenous lighter. Of course I found another Isle of the Deep. Come back to I just want loot. Yep, that's the end of our island. This is more like what I was expecting to have. I prefer ten I tend to prefer going with island hopping because it's more fun. I should describe this red line that's around the base. This is the area that the base is um, capable of assigning workers at. In Civilization 1, 2, and 3, along with Alpha Centauri, it's what's referred to as a fat cross. It is three tiles away from the home base, but not all three at once. So, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, Two, one, two, you get the idea. Um, so, fat cross, this is the area that we can do stuff in. Unfortunately, this area sucks. This base is going to be terrible. Turn complete. So, I'm going to make a new base. Turn complete. Production complete. Okay, well, we've got a couple of other islands nearby, so that's nice. Turn complete. If you can discover a better way of life than office holding for your future rulers, a well-governed city becomes a possibility. For only in such a state will those rule who are truly rich, not in gold, but in the wealth that makes happiness. A good and wise life. Plato, the Republic, data links. So we finished researching social psych. Each technology will have a quote associated with it with a voiceover. Most of the quotes are actually spoken by the faction leaders themselves. Some of them will end up being like historic or philosophical things or people related to various factions. But like, for instance, this is just from the Republic. Um, you can see on the screen that our base facility that we can construct is a recreation commons. I can show you what that does in a bit. Uh, this will lead to the technology's doctrine, loyalty, ethical calculus, and secrets of the human brain. We have a little quote here, and if we click over here, it gives you the brief description in-game of what social psych is. And I'm not going to be reading through all of that because that's way too many things for me to talk about. And I've already done it. Anyway, we are brought back to the new tech screen again. And I am going to be choosing Secrets of the Human Brain in the hopes that I am the first faction to research it. I'm probably the first faction to research it because this is the achievement saying that I am the first faction to research anything at all. In the last game, I wasn't even close to the first faction to research anything, and that was probably a really bad sign that I should have paid attention to. All right. But recovered. Oh. I unleashed an earthquake. That's not what I wanted to do. All the earthquake does is raises up the land around that pod. Honestly, I want to make sure I don't let this unit get destroyed. So I'm just going to be doing Turn some basic complete. scouting without doing anything risky. Turn complete. Turn complete. Penny Island. I mean, I guess it could go off like that, but who knows. 
trying not to go into fungus. This is just C xenofungus. Um, I'm trying not to go into fungus, so with that unit, because I don't want it to die. Turn complete. Really? Ah, so this is a monolith. This is another type of special terrain. Uh, monoliths override whatever else is on the terrain. So in this case, it doesn't matter that it's 340 meters up. It doesn't matter that it's rolling and moist. What matters is that it's a monolith. Monoliths always give two minerals, or sorry, two nutrients, two minerals, and two energy. So at the beginning of the game, that's great. At the end of the game, it's actually not so great because you're like a forest does more than that. Fungus does a lot more than that, in fact. Okay. Bot recovered. All right. So this pod triggered a xenofungal bloom. I am not having much luck in getting pods that don't suck. Um, a xenofungal bloom means that every tile around that pod will pop with fungus. And frequently, that will create this. This is a fungal tower. Fungal towers are, as you can tell, question mark attack, question mark defense. So it's a psionic unit. And it has zero movement. It doesn't move around. And in fact, its level is based off of how much fungus surround the tower. Hopefully, I can actually defeat the tower because that unit's stuck otherwise. That's not so great. Turn complete. There are only two ways in which we can we account have for a necessary the agreement of experience with the concepts of its objects. Either experience makes these concepts possible, or these concepts make experience possible. Immanuel Kant, Critique of Pure Reason, Data Links. All right, so what Secrets of the Human Brain does, again, it leads to a couple more technologies, and I'll show you the technology screen in a moment. In addition, it gives us some unit advances. I have not shown you the unit screen yet. And it allows us to change our government to fundamentalist. Once more, these are things I haven't shown you yet. I will be showing you after I get my free tech. So we get the achievement for discovering secrets of the human brain, which is good. Your researchers have discovered the secrets of the human brain. The excitement of this discovery stimulates a burst of new research. And from here, I will grab Centauri Ecology so I can actually get some formers. Planet's atmosphere, though a gasping death to humans and most animals, is paradise for earth plants. The high nitrate content of the soil and the rich yellow sunlight bring an abundant harvest wherever adjustments can be made for the unusual soil conditions. Lady Deidre Sky. The Comparative Biology of Planet. So yeah, um, you get... Uh, that's Lady Deidre Sky, one of the faction leaders, talking about how to adapt Earth plants to planet so we can eat. Eating's useful. And once more, we have our tech selection. Um, so I should probably explain some of the other techs. Doctrine Mobility. This would allow us to get a new chassis type. I'll explain the units in a bit. And also build a command center, which would give plus two morale to land units. Ethical calculus will allow us to change our government type to de democratic, which I'm going to want to do, along with building a ch children's crate, which is a really good building. Um, I'm going to be researching all of these eventually. Centauri empathy gives us the ability to create mind worms, which are an alien life form unit. And it also allows us to change our economics to green. Notice that I didn't say government. In addition, uh, it allows us to build a secret project, the Empath Guild. Once more, I'll be explaining secret projects in a bit. Uh, it allows us to build the base improvement of a biology lab. Planetary networks allow us a new unit called the Probe Team. In addition, it allows us to change our economics to planned, um, what's commonly referred to as a command economy or a communist economy. In addition, it allows us to build for the faction that we're playing, which is the university, the best... Um, the best secret project in the game called the virtual world in addition allows us to build the base uh, improvement called the holograph theater and finally we can make librarians last tech on this list industrial base this gives us some defense uh, synth metal armor along with building the secret project the merchant exchange we're going to go ahead and go with ethical calculus a lot of things are ethical about calculus i swear and it's time for me to start showing you some other things. So, 
we can see what the recreation commons, which is what we got from Secrets of the Human Brain. Or no, from Social Psych. Recreation commons reduces the number of drones in a colony by two. What are drones, you may ask? Well, drones would be appearing down here if we had any. There are three actually more than three but there are three types of workers that you can have in a colony or four five five but i'm not going to be showing you most of them um there are talents talents are happy people you want happy people if you have more happy people than content people and you have no drones you end up enter into what's called a golden age which give your city many bonuses there are workers which are yellow this is a worker and then there are drones. Drones are unhappy people. If you have more drones than you have happy people, or talents, then your city goes into a drone riot, where it will stop building anything and bad things happen. We'll end up hitting a lot of drone riots. It's inevitable because one of the disadvantages of this faction that I explained before is that every four workers, you get an extra drone. Which is not good. Other things that we can build. Um, we can stockpile energy. We're not going to be stockpiling energy. This is just the default, hey, look, I'm not doing anything. And then there's two secret projects that we could do right now. There's the Human Genome Project. Uh, remember, this game was released in 1997, so they didn't realize how fast the Human Genome Project actually would be, and they expected us to finish this in you know the early 2100s, which will give us a talent in each base. Yep, one extra talent in every base, which is very nice. And there's also the Weather Paradigm. Weather Paradigm is, for any faction that's not Zack, the best secret project in the game. It increases terraforming speed on all of your units, which means that you can improve bases faster, and that snowballs into everything else. It also, other than for remove fungus tasks, it also gives you the ability to construct some advanced terraforming stuff early. That's not as important. The important part is the increased terraform speed. So yeah, unfortunately, our base sucks. Request confirmation. We can't afford things. All right, our odds are seven to nine. Crap. We're not going to win that fight. And we can't move. That stinks. Turn complete. So I have it set to give us the odds of combat Turn in advance. Complete. And we can confirm whether we want to actually fight or not at that point. I prefer having those odds there because it's Turn helpful. complete. Let's go ahead and save before... Datapod recovered. Okay, that datapod gave us a comlink frequency for Chairman Yang. That means that we can actually talk to Yang even though we have no idea where he's at, which is nice. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So Chairman Yang is of the Human Hive, who's currently non-committal in their opinion of us. Well met, Brother Sakharov. I am now called Chairman Yang and act as the voice of the Hive, whose intent it is to is it uh, is to found a society on the principles of security and control. I see you and your minions have flourished on this unforgiving world. Um, bottom left-hand corner, you get a little animated GIF of various things from Yang's childhood. Yang is from China, so you're going to see a lot of pictures that are like public domain pictures from China. And fake stuff. Um, you also get to see a picture of the human hive. If you didn't notice, behind me is kind of like a picture of the logo of the University of Planet. Um... You also can see where their headquarters is at potentially, but we don't see that right now. In addition, down here are our diplomatic information. We currently have no relationship with the Hive. We just started talking to them. Uh, we don't have any infiltration with them. That will come up a bit later, probably. And their might is considered wanting. Our might for reference is considered unsurpassed, so we're actually stronger than them right now, probably because we have three military units and they probably only have one. Um, the might levels are entirely tier-based, so it's not, hey, look, I have 50 bajillion military, thus I am unsurpassed. It is, I have better military than the other six factions on planet. 
I believe your data on Centauri ecology could have important implications for my social experiments. I propose that you exchange this information for my own files on doctrine loyalty. Interested? Why, yes I am. I am always interested in trading technology, as long as I don't give them fusion. We'll get When we eventually get to fusion, I'll explain. Therefore, a wise prince will seek means by which his subjects will always, and in every possible condition of things, have need of his government. And then they will always be faithful to him. Niccolo Machiavelli, The Prince, Data Links. Yeah, do you see why I'm not uh, reading the in-game description of things out loud? Because that's a lot to say out loud. You can pause and look through it while I've been clicking. No, we're not going to switch to a police state right now. And we can continue trading. Also, you notice that the hive is now magnanimous with us, which is the highest asterisk tier of relationship. They like us because we traded tech with them. They didn't have to beg us or anything like that. We're just like, sure, why not? So they like us right now. They won't like us forever because, well, I'll explain in a bit. So they want social psych in exchange will give me industrial base. That sounds great. Resources exist to be consumed and consumed they will be. If not by this generation, then by some future. By what right does this forgotten future seek to deny us our birthright? None, I say. Let us take what is ours, chew and eat our fill. CEO Nwabude K. Morgan, The Ethics of Greed. Now you're starting to see why I wanted to play this game. Um, there's a lot of things in this game that hit really close to home, especially in our year of COVID 2022. Um, Morgan is definitely of the stereotype of corporatism and... Uh, screw you, I've got mine. Yeah. And now Yang wants to trade my information networks for his world map. I'm actually going to say yes. I usually don't do that because world maps are not particularly strong. But I do want to see where Yang is at. Rova Sokolov, I'm concerned that you appear to be withholding scientific data in violation of the UN Charter for this mission. Please release your files on biogenetics to me at once. No. Rova Sokolov, your ideals are admirable, if a bit misguided, and your faction need not pose a threat to Hive policy. Shall we sign a treaty of friendship to formalize our symbolic relationship? Yes. Excellent. Provost Sakharov, this treaty demonstrates that planet is large enough both for your research and for my social experiments. It also opens the door for trade and commerce between our peoples. May the friendship between the university and the hive last forever. It won't. All right. And now we can see, oh, wow, they're really far away. They are almost on the exact opposite side of planet from us. So this is their map. They are in a crappy spot and they already have three bases. We're slacking because our starting area was terrible. So I'm not too surprised that we're slacking on that. Like, our second base is actually better than our capital. That's kind of ridiculous. Request confirmation. Um, I said 12 for remaining. I'm going to spend eight. That will if it's one turn left. One of the things I did like about the Thinker's mod is that it actually did the math for us on that. But we need those recycling tanks so we have enough resources to do anything. Which is why I'm wanting to build it. Um, Alright, other thing I need to show you is the social engineering screen. So this screen, until you have the various technologies, just shows you your faction stats. Which is we have plus two research and minus two probe. Let's also tell you what that is. You'll see down below in the social effects, and I can mouse over these to highlight things, that plus two research... Labs research speeded by 20%, so we research 20% faster. Probe minus two means that minus 50% cost of enemy probe team actions. Probe teams are spies, for reference, so we are susceptible to enemies spying on us. Uh, enemy success rate is also increased, so we do need to watch out for that, but that's not really that big of a deal in my mind. So for our politics, we could switch to a police state. It'll cost us 16 credits. We will have appalling inefficiency, but we'll get plus two support, which give us 
support instead of for two, or I should highlight it here, instead of two units free per base, we would end up with four units free per base. In addition, with our police, we would be able to use three military units as police instead of one. Neither of those actually help us right now, so there's no reason for us to switch to police state right now. And we probably won't Trend ever. Complete. Ah. Mobile tower, got it. It is every citizen's final duty to go into the tanks and to become one with all the people. Chairman Shen Ji Yang, ethics for tomorrow. So the recycling tanks are recycling human bodies. Um, this game does get a bit into horror, just letting you know. But it's our first base facility on planet, which last turn, System Miriam of the Believers had the first base facility on planet overall. It's just our first. That's fine. Really, most of the achievements, what they actually do for us is to just give us an idea to see how far along other AIs are. We're not too far along because our base sucks. We want formers. So our base will suck less. Turn complete. Some vices miss what is right because they are deficient. Others because they are excessive in feelings or in actions. While virtue finds and chooses the mean. Aristotle. Nicomachean Ethics. Data links. So for reference, the data links, the planetary data links are the equivalent of the internet. Um... And yeah, a lot of the early texts have philosophical quotes. The later texts are more or less philosophical and more faction quotes. So this allows us to build a children's crate, which I'll explain. And also we can switch to a democratic form of government, which yes, we are going to go into social engineering and we're going to immediately go to a police state. I'll explain in a bit. So yep, we will go ahead and spend 16 energy credits for it. Um, so now we can start looking at what else we want to do. And hmm. I want to go with Centauri Empathy. So this is just letting us know, hey, look, our money is running really low. We should probably build some solar collectors. We don't even have formers. Um, now let's go ahead and oh. We, now that we've hit a uh, new year, we can actually see information down here. We can see that I'm first in tech. Yang is first in military now. That changed recently, fast. Um, Santiago of the Spartans are first in pop. Morgan's first in wealth. That's fairly typical. We're first in territory, and we're first overall. We click through here. We also see that we have two planetary council votes. The planetary council won't be coming up until we meet everybody, though. Or somebody meets everybody. And we have our graph where we are skyrocketing in dominance and we are definitely number one in everything. Of course, this happened last game as well and that went poorly. So yeah, we switched over to a police state for a reason. So let's go ahead and talk with Yang. So the hive is ambivalent towards us at the moment. And they have an emergency that somehow they need ethical calculus for. Uh, you know what? If you give me money, I'll do it. No. But you are most wise, Provost Sakharov, to keep your subjects under tight control. The common man cannot be trusted to manage his own affairs. Democracy is the first cousin to anarchy. Every faction has some type of social engineering choice that they prefer. And if you are running that particular social engineering choice, you get bonuses with that faction's happiness toward you. If you are running something they're in opposition to, on the other hand you'll start losing those things. That's the reason why I switched over to a police state before talking with Yang. But it doesn't look like Yang has anything. Strangely enough, we still have a higher might rating than Yang does. But their military is higher, so I'm not sure what's up with that. Anyway, now that we've done that, we're going to switch over to a democracy. You'll notice that we are not having to spend money for this. It's because we've already changed our social engineering this turn. That's why I switched over to police state first. Um, what this does is that it will increase our efficiency to commendable. Right now, that's probably not going to do a whole bunch for us, but that's fine. 
Um, our support drops down to negative two, which only supports one unit free per base, and we no longer get new free min minerals for each base. And finally, you can use, or not finally, but we're back down to zero police again, but we have a plus 20% growth rate, which is the reason why I want to switch to democratic. Uh, in addition, our tech is starting to suck. Because we need formers badly. Pod recovered. All right, instead of a pod, it's an alien artifact. And we should take this to a base that contains a network node for study. We actually have a network node in every base, because that's one of our faction bonuses. So we need to take an alien artifact to a network node. You can only link a network node to one alien artifact at a time. Or not at a time, total. Forever. So if we have too many alien artifacts, they might just sit around not doing anything. Because we need to link them to another network node. You can use alien artifacts for rushing secret projects and prototypes. But that's a really crappy use of them. Don't. Don't. So we're going to head back Turn to complete. university base at this point. We're going to go this way, though. Turn complete. You're going to see me save quite a bit for reference Turn because complete. the game is a little on the glitchy Production side. Complete. And I don't trust it. Formers. Everybody foreman. Turn complete. The reason why we went it this way. Cannot execute order. Damn it. Transport. Stupid Unity Foil only holds one. <sighs> um. Turn complete. I would have realized I could have made this work. I'm going to make it work anyway. There. Turn complete. Production complete. All right. University base has formers. Good. We can finally start actually terraforming things. You'll notice down in forces supported that there's a shield here that indicates that we are actually having to spend one mineral per turn on the formers. And I forgot I didn't even describe the base screen. My apologies. Again, this is the second time I've done this. Um, you'll see under minerals, we're producing four minerals and we're using one for consumption that's the mineral that we're consuming so our output is only three minerals per turn uh food we're producing five food but we're using four of them right now to maintain our population we have two population each population takes two food um and energy we're producing three energy we don't have any waste because this is our capital and waste is based off of distance from capital so we are producing three energy per turn that energy allocation down here 50% into labs, so that's one energy, which turns into one money per turn. And two energy into labs, plus one bonus from our network node, equals three labs per turn from the space. That's it. There's nothing else to it. We're going to switch to a colony pod, though. And now the scout patrol will be investigating that island for us. Turn complete. We didn't even mean to move there, but that's fine. All right. So this particular tile is 1,276 meters above sea level, which means that if we... And this will actually produce plus one energy. If we look into our base, we can see that it's not actually at the moment. Oh, we need a solar collector in order to do that. I forgot. Solar collectors add plus one energy to the tile base. So that means that we will be getting two energy per turn from this tile, which is nice. Uh, a farm, this is a moist tile. So normally that would be producing one food with a farm that'll produce two food. So in, t in short, and it's flat, so it won't be giving us any minerals. If we put down a farm and a solar collector, we will be getting two food and two energy per turn. That's what I am doing right now. There's a key command. If I mouse over, it says that its current operation is farm plus solar plus road. I do like how they actually have commands for that. Production complete. Our second formers are complete. That's good. Let's go ahead and throw down a trance scout patrol. I need to show you what the units are like before we stop. 
So, units. This is the design workshop. This is very different from any civilization game. Instead of you saying, like, I have a catapult, ho, 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 or building specific types of units that you get in technology, what you do is that you get one of these five different things. You can get a chassis type, you can get a weapon, you can get a shielding, you can get a reactor, or you can get a special ability. Uh, chassis, at the moment, the only chassis that we have is a basic, you're on foot, infantry. There are other chassis later on um, that we can research that will allow us to go into the air, allow us to go on water, allow us to deal both, or go on land faster, or just be a missile in that one's case. Weapons? Um, this should actually be called utility in general. But in this case, we have hand weapons. We also have colony module. That's for our colony pod. Terraforming unit. That's for our formers. And that's it at the moment. Uh, eventually, we'll gain new weapons, be able to research them, make us go punchy punchy harder. Shielding. Right now, no armor is what we have on all of our units, but we do actually have the tech for a synth metal armor, which allows us to have two defense. You notice that this unit is one attack, two defense, and one movement. Um, we will need to prototype this, so you'll notice that the cost is 20 minerals, and the prototype cost is 30. What that means is that the first time that we build a unit using a prototyped object, which is either weapons or shielding, it will cost us 50% more. <coughs> if they are prototyping multiple things at a time, it still only costs us 50% more. And it will count, and once that's complete, everything for that tier and below counts as being prototyped. So, for instance, if we had, like, I don't know, six for the defense, and we hadn't prototyped five, four, or three yet, then by finishing up the prototype for six defense, we would also finish up the prototypes for five, four, and three along with any weapons prototypes that we have. So usually what you want to do is you want to make a prototype unit that combines multiple of these at once. That's why I'm not going to bother building a synth metal garrison. Not to mention, we don't have any AIs near us right now. Not really much of a reason to build that. Um, you can build up to 64 unique types of units or unique custom creations. These asterisks here are default units and the game will automatically build these for you. In base smack, you would see a colony pod, formers, and scout. Same with uh, Alien Crossfire. The Prakex, or sorry, the Tinkers mod that I have partially loaded adds a couple more base units to make the AI actually use them. In this case, it's a trans scout patrol. Trans is a special ability. The only special ability we have right now, which is hypnotic trance, it adds 50% more defense versus psi units. So it's useful for defending against Mindworms uh, and Isles of the Deep and stuff like that at the start of the game, which is quite handy. Um, it's in here specifically to make the AI build these units so they don't start losing bases constantly to Mindworms, which happens. I kept that in here because it's a good idea and it doesn't really hurt anything. So yeah, we're moving that closer. Turn complete. Ooh. More pods. Indigenous life form. It's full of mind worms. Cool. Hopefully I survive. 1816, rolling and rainy. See, this is the benefits of the Fallus Ridge. Just like real world geography, um, planet has one side of elevation that has lots and lots of rainfall, and the other side that's in a rain shadow, which ends up being desert. In this case, the western side of this ridge, or actually I think this is southern technically, I can't remember now, and it's really hard for me to tell where the ridge actually is, I think this is the ridge, but anyway, one side is going to be rainier than the other, and the game does actually keep the, uh, take that into account when constructing the map, which is nice. Um, we are going to solar panel that. I'm seeing solar panels. That means human activity. Turn complete. Okay, we survived against one. It leveled up our unit to disciplined. And we survived against the other. Good. And it leveled up our unit again to hardened. Bot recovered. 
We have discovered a minerals pod from the Unity. It has provided sufficient minerals for us to finish building the colony pod at the university base this turn. That's nice. Admittedly, I still don't have a great spot for the colony, but that's that's fine. All right, an alien artifact has arrived at university base. Shall we unleash its powers? Link it to our network node at once. Our scientists have linked the artifact to the data network and made wondrous discoveries. Observe the razor beak. Like the tech that we're working on. so carefully to the fungal blooms. Just the right bit from the yellow, then a swatch from the pink. Follow the glow mites as they gather and organize the fallen spores. What higher order guides their work? Mark my words. Someone or something is managing the ecology of this planet. Lady Deidre Sky, Planet Dreams. If you can't tell, I'm scrolling down on this for the quote specifically, so you basically have a version of subtitles. Um, so yeah, Lady Deidre Sky is starting to have the briefest inklings that mm, this is more like the way intelligent life behaves, not not intelligent life. What's going on? Told you, this game has plot. And we now have the ability to look at our social engineering choice of green. Green would increase our efficiency by two, increase our planet by two, which is actually kind of important, but decrease our growth by two. So efficiency up to four would give us a paradigm economy, which allows us to do a few extra fun things. Um, our growth rate would drop back down to normal again, and our planet is ecological harmony, and we have an increased chance of native life form capture. What that means is that we now would have a chance when we attack a native unit to, instead of attacking it, just taking it. We will definitely be doing green later on, but right now, excuse me, right now I actually want the growth, so I'm not going to bother. But we have our first interlude. Reporting, Provost. The young functionary stands stiffly at attention. Born in the early years of Planetfall, she belongs to a generation which knows Earth only as a distant legend. Natalia, I have a... S what the hell accent was that? I have a special assignment for you, you say, fixing her with an intense stare. These samples must be taken to Dr. Fedorov at Gagarin Memorial. Sleep, see to it personally. You hand her a lead-lined security case. The cryopack inside contains the stuff of nightmares. Mindworm specimens. Viable specimens. Viable specimens, Isun. They're viable. Captured and preserved at the cost of untold lives. Fedorov's team has studied the recent mindworm upsurge and claims that mindworm boils act as a sort of regulator for planet's ecology. Human settlement is disrupting the native ecosystem, and the mindworms are swarming like a kind of ecological antibody. At once, Provost. Oh, sorry. I skipped a line. Uh, Fedorov has also reached an even more ominous conclusion. With modern bio biology lab facilities, mindworms could be bred in captivity and used as horrifying weapons against other human factions. At once, Provost, Natalia says, stepping backwards into the access way. Efficient, competent, and far better disciplined than the youths of the 21st century Earth that you left behind, Natalia has grown up uh, has grown up in a world fraught with very real dangers. Terrifying dangers once the exclusive province of the same manner of legends and tales to which Earth itself is now consigned. So these interludes are basically the plot of the game. They will all be all text-based. I will read them out. And some of them may or may not even appear in a game based off of the actions that you do. But all of them could theoretically appear and it will basically just replace certain things like for instance the title provost if i was playing as um whatchamacallit um if i was playing as morgan for instance it would be reporting ceo instead uh the names of things will change the names of bases will change stuff like that and we are at an hour so i'm going to finish up this turn um indigenous life form of course. turn complete. Yeah, I'm, that, I'm just complete. gonna reload that. Give me a moment. Production complete. I'm going to try to not do a bunch of chronomancy, but I was just curious to see if that would end up being a Isle of the Deep. Of course it is. It always is. 
turn complete. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this here. I hope you've enjoyed this internet, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.